see what God has to say to us today. Um, I'm going to be jumping around. Let's just pray before we start. Lord, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you that we can we can hear from you this morning. Lord, we're so privileged to gather as your family, to gather as a body of believers united by your love for us. That's why we're here, Lord. We're here because you love us so much. And I just pray now, Lord, that even as we as we go into the Word, that you will open our spiritual ears to receive that you will remove any hindrances, any emotions, any thoughts that are not you want. Remove it in Jesus' name, so that your word will, will be planted deep inside of us. Find that good soil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. We're reading from Joel 3, uh, from verse 9, and then we're going to jump around. Are you with me? Okay. Joel was one of the minor prophets, right? Minor prophets. But... In these three chapters that, that God gave him, word and revelation and prophecy, it was mind-blowing stuff. And like most of the prophets of that time, we see that the word was not just for them, but the word is actually more so for now. And God can bring each, each new word from the prophets from all of the books alive in a new season, mm-hmm. like we've never seen it before. Amen. And this is what we're going to be looking at today. Joel 3, from verse 5, sorry, verse 9. It says, proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Rouse the warriors. Now remember I said to you back about five weeks ago, I can't remember how long it it was ago, when we looked at um, Psalm 119, at the beginning of the new season, 5775, remember that? What stood out from that chapter of the season that the other chapters didn't have? Lots of? My favorite word. Verbs, thank you. Lots of verbs, action words. Let's look at this. Proclaim. What is that? That's a verb. It's an action. We have to do something. The time of sleeping and the time of slumbering has come to an end. The time of sleeping and the time of slumbering has come to an end. It is now time for us to start acting. Because for too long we've been laureling around and messing around and carrying on the now the word of God says proclaim, do something, get up, speak. That's right. Proclaim this among the nations. What God, what do you want me to say to the people? Prepare for war. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Sure. Yeah. Prepare for war. Now I told you guys a couple of weeks ago that, that in this new season that we're gonna see, there's gonna be a rising up of the armies of the Lord yes. like never before. Yes. Look at the attacks on the churches, guys. Mm. I was reading just the other day Pastor Al from Joburg also. There's some attack on him now because some part of his building, I don't know, they said it wasn't legal or something. We've got attacks on, on international people. All over the world, there's attacks on the church. Mm. Is this not the start of war? Mm. What does God want us to do in this time, in this new season? He wants us to tell the nations, tell the nations about to sleep and cuddle in bed. No! That season is past. Because God says prepare for war. It's a clear, definitive statement. What do you need when you prepare for war? First of all, you have to get out of bed. You have to get out of bed. You have to get out of of the comfort zone. You have to get out of the place of of relaxing, the place of complacency. There's a war coming, people. Maybe not just spiritual. You've seen what's happening in the world. We've seen what's happening in the world. We've got groups, terrorist groups showing up everywhere. We've got viruses that are are killing people. The four horsemen? Yeah, sure. The four horsemen? That's right. Yeah. Very possibly. One of the horsemen is war. Mm. One of them is? Pestilence. Plagues. Sicknesses. Sicknesses. Mm. Have the seals been opened? Is Jesus there opening the seven seals? Sure. Look at the time that we are living in. This is not the time for sleeping and slumbering. This is the time to proclaim to the nations. What? Prepare for war. Rouse the warriors. Mm-hmm. If God says rouse the warriors, what are the warriors doing? Sure, Sleeping. <laughs> Sleeping. Mm-hmm. If this is the word for now, and God says rouse the warriors, it means that the warriors were not doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's true. What are we as the church doing? What are we doing in Bloopendale? What are we doing? How are we moving? How are we acting? How are we advancing the kingdom? 
to what he is. You know, I got this revelation last night, and I don't know if a lot of you will witness with me. Remember last year, our second anniversary. What was the theme of it? What's the theme? Kingdom of More than a conqueror. And I remember, and I'm going to say this in accountability, this passes appreciation there, so you can appreciate some truth. <laughs> that day when I gave the message, that Sunday when I gave the message of Kingdom Warrior more than a conqueror, I felt it fell flat. Mm. And the reason being, it wasn't a message, it was prophecy. Sure. Mm. Sure. It wasn't a message, it was prophecy, not for that season, but for this one. Mm. And it's no coincidence that we celebrate our next anniversary in a few weeks' time. Mm. That message was not for that season, it was a word of prophecy for the coming season. The season of armies, mm. the season of the warriors, the season of the church rising up, not fighting against each other, mm. but uniting for the kingdom. Amen. Proclaim this. Amen. Proclaim this. Say it. Prepare for war. And I'm telling you, family, this morning, prepare for war. Yes. Yes, prepare for war. Because there's a war happening. And what must we do? As the warriors of God, we must rise up. Mm. And so stop sleeping. Rouse up the warriors. Let the fighting people draw near and attack. Are you a fighter this morning? Yes. yes. Are you a fighter? Yes. yes. Are you a fighter for the kingdom? Yes. yes. Then what must we do? We must draw near. We must start gathering. We must start uniting. Mm -hmm. Because something's happening. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you a few weeks ago, I wept and I spoke about the shifting and at the same time the sifting that happens and how the Lord showed me people will fall away. Mm -hmm. And remember how I tried to negotiate with God. I'm over that. Mm -hmm. I'm over the negotiations. Mm -hmm. Because now it's the next step. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the next step is now we have to gather those that want to be here. Yeah. Now we must gather those that are answering the call because right now the Spirit of God is saying, who can I, who can I send? Who can I put my eye to? You must be saying, me, Lord. Me. I want to work for you in the kingdom. I want to be an active participant, not a boring spectator. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. Stop being spectators in the kingdom. Let's rise up and let's draw near. And not just anyone. The word says the fighting warriors. Mm. You know, in, in war, you also get chefs and you get all the, you know, different kinds of people get nurses and all of that. God doesn't say gather the, everyone. Mm. He says gather the fighters. Yes, yes, God. Mm. Gather the warriors. Mm. The kingdom warriors. Mm. They know that they are more than conquerors. Yes. Yes. Gather that lot. And attack. Draw near and attack. <laughs> but we're going to start attacking. And what's the first thing we need to do before we attack? Arise and unite. Mm -hmm. Look at the order that God gave us. Rouse the warriors, let them draw near. That's the order. Wake up, unite, and then attack. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're going to do in this new season. Mm -hmm. We're going to unite. Not, not with the ones who have sadly fallen away, no. But with the warriors who picked up their hands. And you say, yes, Lord, I'm ready for duty. I'm reporting. Whatever you need me to do, Lord, for your kingdom, I will do it. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Not picking and true. The kingdom is not a lucky packet. No. Hey, don't lucky packets. We don't get to choose. We, we just say, yes, Lord, I want. Put, put me, yes, me, me, me. Yes. But the good me. <laughs> not the bad me, the selfish me. Not that, the good me. Yes, me, Lord. That's what you want to do. Beat your plowshares into sword. Beat your weapons that you use for work. Your weapons that you would narrowly use out there in the field. Turn that into a sword for the Lord. Mm. And I'm going to ask you right now, guys, what is your daily work? Mm. What is your work? Whatever your work is, whatever you do, you need to start shaping that. You need to start molding that into a weapon for the kingdom. Yes. Because we go to work Monday to Friday and we forget about the things of God. We forget about the things of the kingdom. Amen. We must start rising up, family. We must start getting excited because there's something happening. Amen. The armies of the Lord are uniting. Yes. We've seen what's happening with the global church. Yes. I'll tell you again, all the people we're chatting to, that we've been friends forever. Okay. Pastors from all over the world. It's fantastic. And that's because everyone senses. 
this unity. That's coming. The coming together of the body of Jesus. The coming together of the body of Jesus as we start seeing the horsemen that are coming to attack us. And as the horsemen are riding, we say, well, we guess who we behind? We behind the rider of the white horse. Yes. Yes. Whose name is holy. Yes. Who carries the sword and will undo it all with one swoosh. That's, right. mm. That's who we behind. Yes, Lord. But we cannot do that segmented. We cannot do that in isolation. And I always tell people, you know what? There's no apostles to see that there's no cowboys in the kingdom. Cowboys are even the long ranges. Mm-hmm. Okay, none of that. Mm-hmm. There's none of that in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Hey? None of that in the kingdom. Kingdom is about unity. Rise up the warriors. Let the fighters draw near and attack. Beat your plowshares into sword and your pruning hooks into spears. We have to start getting a mind shift about if you're a nurse by profession, somehow be a nurse for the Lord. Because we, you see what's happening here. You must take the one and you must make it into something else. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. Turn the plowshares into swords. Mm-hmm. Take the pruning hooks and turn them into spears. What does that mean? That means we have to switch. We have to switch our thinking. We have to switch our ideas about who we are and how we operate in this world. We need to move from a, a world mindset into a kingdom mindset. Yes. Yes. We need to move from a world mindset into a kingdom mindset. That's right. yes. With kingdom principles, with the power and the spirit of the living God guiding you and directing you. Shift your mind. Let the weak things say, how many of you feel weak right now in all honesty? Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good, that's good. Paul says, rejoice in your weakness. Because it's in your weakness we God's strength can be made perfect. Yes. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Let the weak thing say, well, now watch what you say. Are you going to say I'm weak? No, because you've made a mind shift. Yes. That's right. mm. Yes. Mm. Do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the mm. renewing of your mind. Mm. That's the only way we're going to realize who we are in the kingdom. We are warriors, people. Yes. Warriors, not wimps. Mm-hmm. Warriors, not the punching bag of the enemy. Mm-hmm. Let the weakling say, I am strong. Say that with me. I am strong. Again. I am strong. Believe it. I am strong. Let the weakling say, Tomorrow morning you wake up, you look yourself in the mirror and say, Lord, I'm worried for you and I am strong. Doesn't matter what your boss is, while your boss is talking to you, you say, I am strong. Doesn't matter what challenges you're facing, you look it in the eye and you say, I am strong. Shift your mind. Yes, yes. I'll say it again. Don't be a wimp. Mm. Be a warrior. Yes. Be a warrior for the kingdom and be a warrior in the kingdom. Change your mindset about who you are. Make the shift from the natural into the supernatural. Make the shift from the natural, from the world, into the kingdom. Amen? Amen. I'm jumping to verse 12. It says, let the nations be roused. Once again, let the nations wake up. Let them advance into the valley of Jehoshaphat. How many of you know who King Jehoshaphat was? King Jehoshaphat. He's got a wonderful story in Second Chronicles from about 19 to about 23, but there's one distinctive thing that King Joseph had said when the armies were attacking him. Mm. People were freaking out. You know what King Joseph had says? The battles are mine. The battle is the Lord's. Amen. Amen. And that's what King Joseph had says. Now it's interesting that God says that the nations must gather where? In the valley of knowing that he is in charge. In the valley of knowing that the battle yours, but the battle belongs to him. Amen. That's where we must gather. Yes. He's not bad power around there. If Lord, if there's a natural location, let's go. Yes. Amen? Amen? But it's not a natural location. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, in the mind. Mind. Yes. it's in the mind. In the valley of Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat who said, the battle is not mine. The battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord's. Amen. And which army of the world can come against the Lord? Mm-hmm. Now, so which side are you on? 
Where's your mind? Are you going to be stuck in the armies of the world with all the limitations and all the nonsense and all of that misery? Or are you going to switch over mm. to the kingdom side? In the valley of Jehoshaphat, where the nations are gathering. Why? Because there the Lord will sit. The Lord is going to sit in a place where the Lord is honored. Yes. Yeah. I'll say it again. The Lord is going to sit in a place where the Lord is honored. Yes. Where the Lord is revered. Where the Lord is beheld. Where people say, Lord, oh, you're so awesome. This battle is yours. Yes. That's where God is sitting. Yes. What season are we in? The season of? Um, Beholding the season of hay. Yes. Five. Seven, seven, five. Yes. Beholding the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let them advance into the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit. Verse 13. Swim the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. We stopped praying a long time for the harvest. Remember that? Yes. At the stage we were praying for the harvest, then I switched and we said, no, 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 we're missing a trick here. Let's not pray for the harvest, but let's pray for? The workers. The workers. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. We stopped praying for the harvest and we switched to praying for the, the workers. workers. But now, in this season of beholding the Lord, in this season of the unity of the armies of God, it is time to swing the sickle. We can pray for the harvest. Jesus said we must pray for the nations. We must pray, we must pray, we must pray. But the season will come where the Lord will say, Now! Go. Now! Gather the harvest. Now! Gather the nations. And guess what? It's now. <laughs> it's now. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. I'm jumping to verse 16. Oh, and this excites me. The Lord will roar. Zion and ourselves that our God roars the commands to his people and he roars to fire up the people and he roars in thunder and the whole earth will shake and tremble but God is God and that's why he roars the Lord will roar from Zion thunder from Jerusalem and the earth and sky will tremble. Sometimes I don't know if you guys experience this. Have you guys noticed when we have pre meetings, half the time we end up on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> like, like flat, eh? Hey? Sprawled sick bodies. No one can even get up to take the picture because everyone's on the floor. Amen. Why is that? Doesn't it feel like the earth shakes sometimes? Yes. Yeah, exactly. it's, like, it's like you can't stand on your own two feet. And that is because we are making that shift from who we are in the natural into who God is that's why it is. in the supernatural mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's why it feels like you're like oh no no and you're praying and you're there next minute you'll be face first back I don't know wherever you'll end up I'll be there amen, amen. Yeah. I love it because who are we to stand in the presence of the king mm -hmm. who are we to stand in the presence of the most high and behold his glory with, a, with our frail bodies mm -hmm. yes. we need to be on our faces yes. Yes. we need to be on our knees beholding him Creative miracles like we've never seen before. 
And that is because it is the season of the Spirit of God. Mm. But guess what? If you're sleeping, you miss it all. You miss it all. Yes. Mm. If you're bored, you miss it all. Mm. If you're easily distracted, yes. you miss it all. Mm. If you're lazy, you miss it all. If you're selfish, you miss it all. What defines the season? Selflessness. 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 Thank you for listening. Thank you guys, but yes. Selflessness defines the season. And selflessness means giving up, even if you don't want to. Selflessness means dragging yourself. Pastor Al always says, drag yourself by the hair if you have to. Drag yourself by the hair if you have to to the temple of God. Mm. Drag yourself if you have to to a place where you can be on your knees beholding the Lord. I always tell you, you'll sleep when you die one day. Yeah. God is not worth five minutes. Mm -hmm. A little splash in the morning. You know, we spend more time with our cup of coffee than we spend with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then people stumble home from work and you, know, and you stumble onto your couch or onto your bed and then it's TV until you fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Where should we be? God's presence. God's presence in the valley of Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. beholding the Lord, mm -hmm. taking God in. If you snooze, you lose. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. If you snooze, you lose. You will miss the glory. Mm -hmm. We can't be so distracted in the spirit. And what is the biggest thing that distracts us and takes our energy from God or attention from God? Yes. Ourselves. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh, it's all about me. Oh, Lord, I'm not. Yes, Lord, yes, I'm in there. Oh, but I don't feel good. Yes, Lord, I'm depressed. No, guys. We have to move beyond all of those things. I spoke two weeks ago about your identity. Mm -hmm. Your identity is not in a psychological condition. Your identity is not in a biological condition. Your identity is not in a term that somebody has put on you. That is not your identity. Yes, yes, yes. Your identity is in the Lord. Your identity is in Christ Jesus, which means by the way that you should be holding him, you should be appreciating, you should be taking in all your identity from him. Yes, right. Yes. Yes, Lord. Not from the nonsense that we put ourselves under. Yes. And you know what? It's exhausting. Yes. It's exhausting to be angry. Yeah. It's exhausting to be to, to be gossipy. Yeah. It's exhausting to be all whatever. It's exhausting. But in God, what's the opposite of exhausting? We have rest. rest. Amen. In God, we have rest. So move over from the one and into the other. Mm -hmm. Sharpen up your plowshare and turn them into a sword. Mm -hmm. yes. Move from the natural into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I'm reading from Zechariah 10. Zechariah 10 verse 5. In fact, from verse 4, let's take it from verse 4, Zechariah. Zechariah is just before the New Testament, like two or three books, two books before the New Testament, yeah. Mm -hmm. Zechariah, right? And also another minor prophet, but wow, God showed him some things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Zechariah 10, verse 4 and 5. From Judah will come the cornerstone. From Judah will come the cornerstone. Who was the cornerstone? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus was the cornerstone that people rejected. But on that rock, on that knowledge of who he is, the church came. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus is the cornerstone. But then I'll take you back to something I've overlooked. And the Spirit just opened my eyes to it this week. From Judah, will come the cornerstone. Now we know that Jesus was from the tribe of? Judah. Judah. And the tribe, the symbol of the tribe of Judah is the? Lion. Hello. Lion. The symbol of the tribe of Judah is the? Lion. lion. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. The tribe of Judah also produced the lion of? Kings. The tribe of Judah produced the lion of kings. But even better, what does Judah mean? Does not mean lion, does not mean king. But from the tribe of Judah, or from Judah, will come the cornerstone. From Judah will come Jesus. From, from Judah will come access to Jesus. Amen. What does Judah mean? I'll, I'll save you the trouble. 
Judah means praise. Oh, sure. Judah means praise. So when we praise, we will have access to the cornerstone. When we praise, we will have access to Jesus. Amen. Amen. When we praise, we will have access to that deep place. Who is he? From him, the ten peg. All of our existence, all of the expansion, everything we do is from Jesus, from him, the battle bow. From him, every ruler, every ruler, every leader is a point of our God. But now this is where it gets good. Mm. Together they will be mighty warriors. I'm not sure what your Bible says. Together, separate? In isolation? Alone in their beds? No. Together. Together they will be mighty warriors. I'm not sure what your Bible says. What will they be doing? Sleeping? No. Trampling. What is trampling? It's another action word. It's another word of involvement. It's another word of moving. Together they will be mighty warriors. Trampling the muddy streets in battle. Because the Lord is with them, they will fight and overthrow. Overthrow? The horsemen. The horsemen. The horsemen. And I know we don't often preach about revelation and stuff, but guys, there's four horsemen of the apocalypse. You guys know, I'm sure you've even seen them in some Hollywood movie. They valid the, you know, some director was brave enough making a tent. There's four horsemen. And like I said, I believe I've seen, we've seen, or I've seen two of them released already. The third one's inflation. The third one's inflation. I lied. So we've seen three of them released. Famine. Yes. The four horsemen. War. Yes. Sickness and disease. Inflation and prices. And? Nothingness. Yesterday was the first time Bloemfontein had rain in how long? Months, months. Some parts of the Africa local bread is close to 20 bucks. We're living in the highest rates of everything we've ever seen. I read reports that they expect maybe by the end of this year there's to be another crash in the American markets. Probably worse than we've ever seen. A horseman? Definitely. Man died in Pochester the other day. They initially thought it was Congo fever. So the African government's denied it was Ebola, but he had all the symptoms. Four-year-old boy died in the States in terror virus. Back in Spain and Italy, Legionnaire's disease is back. Legionnaire's disease, Ebola, after three, four decades, Ebola's back. And it's already killed more people than it has in combined human history. Mm-hmm. It's the worst outbreak of Ebola that we've seen right now. In this time when we've, we've got phones that can do whatever you can do, we've got TV, we've got all this technology, and no one can find a cure for Ebola? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No one can find a cure for Legionnaire's disease and Congo fever? Mm-hmm. No. Because we are using natural methods to fight spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. It's spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. Are you scared? No, no, no. You have no need to be strong. Because you're in the valley of Joseph, Mm -hmm. if you choose to be. Together there will be mighty warriors trampling the mighty streets in battle. In unity, guys. In unity. Because the Lord is with them. They will fight and overthrow the horsemen. But we are in the Lord. And we will overcome. We are kingdom warriors. We are more than conquerors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. The last one. Mm-hmm. Last one. Right, verse 6. I pray that you may be Are you there? Mm-hmm. Verse 6. I pray that mm-hmm. Isolation? Mm-hmm. No. Separation? Mm-hmm. No. Unity? Mm. Pastor, please read on. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing you share for the sake of Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen. My Bible says active 
in Shiri. Mm. Active. Another action word. We have to start doing something, people. We have to move beyond, I'll say it again, we have to move beyond slumber because the word has gone out and the word has roused the warriors. Mm. The word has gathered. The word has united. The word has attacked. The word has trampled. Am I right? Yes. And just to round everything off, the book of Philemon says, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith. Not just once a week when we have testimonies, mm. but that mindset I spoke about. That mindset of moving permanently from the natural mm. into the kingdom. Asking God, how can you adapt your work things? I'm saying you must ask God, how can you turn your plow into a sword for the kingdom? How can you turn your little pruning tool into a spear to be used for the glory of the Lord? Warriors are not just warriors on a Sunday. You didn't like that, did you? <laughs> warriors are not just warriors on a Sunday. We're not just kingdom citizens on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. We are exactly, we are kingdom citizens 24-7. Yes. So in unity, let us work together in sharing our faith. To share of every good thing <coughs> that we have in Christ. And I know you might think, well, Pastor, oh, that's a weird verse to end with. It's the best verse to end with. Because that's what it means to be a kingdom warrior. Yes. Is to constantly actively in unity share yes. about Jesus. Yes. To share about every good thing that we have in Christ. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. To share about Jesus and to share about every good thing that we have in Christ. What is the Bible called? Good news. Good news. <laughs> Jesus. The good news. The great news. The really great news. That is your job. That's what it means to be a teen and warrior, is to get up in the morning and say, Lord, how can I tell of you today? Our battle is not against flesh and blood. And our battle is also not with earthly weapons. Yes. But our battle is with and in the spirit. Yes. And what is the word? The word is spirit. Mm -hmm. The word is life. Yes. So we need to ask the spirit, how can we move from the one to the other? How can we make the shift into the kingdom? Mm -hmm. To speak of things of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And to share of things of the kingdom. Amen. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith. So that you will have a full understanding. The more you share God, the more you talk about God, the deeper your understanding about God is going to get. The deeper your knowledge about God is going to get. Because you're going to, you're going to be like, oh, now someone's experiencing something difficult. Lord, what can I say? And you, the answers are here. So you're going to start paging and you're going to start looking for verses. Am I right? Yes. You're going to start getting more involved with God in participation with your spiritual family in what's happening out there. Yes. Sharing verses, inviting people to stuff, participating in prayer walks and, and things like that that we do. Amen. That's how you become an active participant and you get a deeper and a fuller understanding of the things of God. Every good thing that we have in Christ. I read something, you must just check my Twitter, one of those things I reposted, I think it was Bobby Hughes. He said, um, the more you talk about the greatness of the Lord, the more you realize how stupid everything else in your life is. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's start talking more about God. And less about the things that, whether they are really imagined, the challenges in our life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let us go for that deeper understanding of the things of God. So that we can share and make a meaningful impact. Amen. I'll say it again. Prepare for war. Rouse the warriors. Unite as a body. And be active in sharing the deeper things of God. We are kingdom warriors. We are more than conquerors. Not by our own words. Not by 
fancy language and spiritual jargon, but by active faith, active sharing, moving in the kingdom. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for, for releasing the word of the now on us. And Lord Jesus, we grab it. We grab it. We grab it in Jesus' name. And we say, yes, Lord, turn us into active participants in the kingdom. We don't want to sit on the sidelines anymore. We want to be actively moving, be active warriors for you and for your glory. Move, Holy Spirit. Move in Jesus' name. Amen.